What's going on with Giannis here? Well, uh, you know what? He's getting a little bit nervous. Uh, they lost four straight in the uh, conference finals last year to Toronto, and now they're going up against a team that's not the Orlando Magic, a team they never considered to be a threat um, in the Orlando Magic. Excuse me, and now they're going up against the Miami Heat, and it's a different ball game. Let me say this, because it's incredibly important to say this to Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, uh, who's obviously a phenomenal player with a phenomenal future. Uh, and in light of the social justice uh, issues that just took place last week, where they were ready to forfeit a game, uh, we all know that Giannis Antetokounmpo deserves a boatload of credit for Milwaukee taking the stance it took, standing with his teammates George Hill, Sterling Brown, and others, and electing not to play. Uh, but here's the bottom line. You have the cachet and the basketball prowess because of your defensive prowess. We're asking the, the reporter that question and having an attitude about it or whatever the case may be is inexcusable. The reality of the situation, Greek Freak, if you are listening, is that if you got a guy that's dropping in the midst of dropping 40, why didn't you ask to guard him? We don't want to hear, well, you just do what the coach tells you to do. Of course you do what the coach tells you to do. But throughout NBA history, we've seen stars that said, bump that. This is what I'm doing. And a coach doesn't stop you. A coach is very good about going about the business from an X's and O's standpoint and saying, okay, this is what I want to do. But the true superstars in the game have the cachet to say, uh-uh, I'm going to handle that. Which is why you saw Kawhi on Luka Doncic even more in game six because of what he allowed to transpire. I believe it was game four when Luka Doncic dropped a triple-double that included 43 points and Kawhi wasn't guarding him near the end when he hit that game-winning shot. Allowed to be switched off and ended up with Luka Doncic being defended by Reggie Jackson. The superstars in this game, particularly when you are renowned for your defensive prowess, doesn't leave that responsibility to somebody else unless it's an elite guard, but you're asking them to guard somebody like Shaq. Now, that would be different. But if you are an elite defender and you have, there's no size issue, you don't put that responsibility on somebody else. You handle it yourself. And the Greek freak did not do that last night. That's not on Budenholzer. That's on the Greek freak. Yeah, this is a debate show, but from time to time, um, we're thinking about it along the same lines. Um, the history of the NBA has been, and one of the reasons I think I like it, because I'm you know, a big boxing fan, um, has been that the player, the star player, the superstar player, has a little more agency over what he does at the end of a game than in other sports. It's not a one-on-one -on -one sport, but, the super, but it is a sport where um, making the right basketball play is sometimes not making the right basketball play in other circumstances. In other words, it's imposing yourself and your will on a star player on the other team if it comes down to it. And I agree with you here, Stephen A. Um, Giannis needs to assert himself a little more, I think. And I think his confidence, um, I, I know the argument can be made, well, he's just doing the right thing and he's a team player. But when you're um, the MVP of the league, it's going to be two years in a row now and your team needs you for something, and, and the other team's superstar is hot, then maybe you insist on taking that assignment. Um, Giannis is a, you know, is a, is, really has a big reputation for being the kind of guy you want for your franchise. But can he lead a franchise to a championship? Certainly the Bucks look on paper like they have enough to get out of the East this year. After all, they won more games than anyone, and they did the same last year. And Budenholzer also, he did this with Atlanta, won 60 games and got beaten up in the playoffs. Um, but he didn't have an, 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 an Antetokounmpo on that team. He does, he does on this team. But who is Giannis Antetokounmpo? Is he going to go down as one of the greatest players in the history of basketball? And it looks like he has the ability to do it. Or is he going to go down as a superstar of his time? But he was missing something that allowed him to get to the next level. The missed free throws, I thought, were a sign of shaken confidence. I did not think he had a good game on either side of the floor yesterday. And he's going to have to play better. And that may mean on asserting himself within his own team a little bit more as this series goes on.
Yes, uh, you, you guys are completely correct. You know, one of the things you talked about, uh, Max, is that he didn't have a great offensive performance. And that's one thing as a great player, even if you're not scoring the ball well, even if you're struggling offensively, whether it's free throws or turnovers, one thing that Giannis that not a lot of other superstars have is that ability, that ability to say like, hey, I'll just go defend. We look at what Jimmy Butler takes on the challenge of T.J. Warren. We've seen so many great perimeter guys, whether it's Kawhi Leonard or Draymond Green, step up to the challenge. Now, Giannis is a very unique talent, right? So I had people tweeting me saying, oh, well, no one was asking Rudy Gobert. He was the defensive player of the year. But don't compare Rudy Gobert and Giannis' skill sets as defensive player of the years the same. Really, because Giannis has so much more mobility. And sometimes, as everyone knows, giving a hot offensive player a different look is what can really either make him think a little bit more, maybe change up his strategy. I have no problem with Giannis doing what he's, what he's asked of as a coach. But there are two things that are key in that statement. One, you should want to take on the challenge. That's what great players, that's what guys, you're going to be put in a category of Akeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan as players that won the defensive player and MVP in the same year. And you're asking a reporter, why would you ask me a question about whether or not I wanted to guard Jimmy? It's because everyone's curious about that. When you have that dominant guy that's just going down the stretch, scoring point after point and screaming and yelling, and you know he's a gamer, and you know he would take on that challenge. Now, do I think the Bucks are in trouble? I think this is one game, this is all of that. But ultimately, like everyone on this panel has said, Giannis has to step up, not only on the offensive end late in games, but also defensively when they need it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.